A great day to one and all. I am Kim J.C. Enshaw, a faculty member of Iloilo National High School SPSTE, and I am here to discuss briefly with you how to interpret differences, be it significant or not, particularly if you are doing inferential data analysis. So what I will be giving you right now is just a quick overview. I am not going to perform any statistical tests like uh, on how to do it really. But right now, I am going to present to you fictitious results of statistical tests. With the in but the intention right now is on how we could interpret the results and what do they really mean in the context of research. So let's say the research problem is, your inferential research question is, is there a significant difference in the weights of SPSTE9 students when grouped according to sex? And your findings show that the mean weight of all the males is 58.59 kilograms with a standard deviation of 2.5 kilograms. And the mean weight of the females is 59.13 kilograms with a standard deviation of 3.0. So you could see that the mean weight of the females is greater than, is not equal to the mean weight of the males. However, after doing some sort of inferential, uh, after doing your analysis, you are able to find out that there is no significant difference in the weights of SPSTE9 students when grouped according to sex. So what does this mean? If there is no significant difference between the weights of between a uh, male and females uh, weights what does that mean what possible interpretation may be given to this note that there are many ways of writing your answers and probably the way that you write your answer is different than mine but what is more important is that the thought of the answer is correct so remember in statistics if there is no significant difference between the weights here, so we are actually saying that they are statistically equal with one another. Although in reality, if you would take a look, their mean weights are not equal, but since there is no significant difference between these weights, then there is a good reason for you to say that statistically speaking, the mean weights of the males and females are equal with one another. Hence, a possible interpretation may be this, and there are many ways of reporting your answers, but for now, we will stick with this type of reporting in class. It is found out that there is no significant difference in the weights of SPSTE9 students when grouped according to sex. So I just re reiterated this. Then you provide a, an implication or a meaning for that. This means that male, then you copy the mean and standard deviation of their weights. Um, for the write-up, I want them to uh, be in M for mean and SD for the uh, standard deviation. That the males with M equals 58.59 and a standard deviation of 2.50 and female with mean weight of 59.13 kilograms and SD of 3.0, SPST in nine students have similar weights. Meaning to say, male and females are somehow similar. Mean and the mean weight of males and females are statistically equal or similar with one another. So that is the meaning of this. Although, analyzing the data there is a difference really but that difference is not significant it's not big enough to be significant that's why we treated them as statistically equal that's why we come up with this interpretation so that's the first one 
How about if I give you another one? Let's have another example. Say the research problem is, is there a significant difference in the scientific ability scores or SAS of students when they are classified according to enrollment status? So suppose your findings, again, these findings are fictitious, but suppose your findings say that the mean uh, scientific ability scores of the scholars are 75.45 and the S with an SD of 7.54. Whereas for non-scholars, their SAS is 67.10 with a standard deviation of 5.40. And suppose your uh, statistical analysis uh, showed that there is a significant difference in the scientific ability scores or SAS of students when they are classified according to enrollment status. So this time, the difference is significant. That's what your stat says. So what possible interpretation could we give? Remember, if there is a significant difference in the means, this implies that one mean, that first mean could be greater than the other, or the first mean could be less than the other. And we have to remember that in mathematics, if A is not equal to B, then it means either your A is greater than B or the first number A is less than B. So what I wanted to know or what I wanted you to do is that if there is a significant difference, then you have to tell if one is larger than the second or the first is less than the second. And how do you do that? we have to examine their means for this case. So from here, the mean of scholars is 75.45, while that of non-scholars is 67.10. For now, we will use that the mean of as basis for now. And here is our result. So a possible interpretation is, since they are not, they are, there is a significant difference in their scientific ability, so, Therefore, one of them is greater than, significantly greater than the other, or significantly smaller than the other. So you just have to choose which one you have to report, significantly greater than or significantly less than, or their, or their um, other manifestations, or their other ways of their synonyms, for example, could also be used. So for here, here's, here's my possible interpretation. Results revealed with ED, results revealed that there is a significant difference in the scientific ability scores or SAS of students when they are classified according to enrollment status. So I just reiterated this. Also, so if there's a significant difference, you have to examine their means. You see that the mean of scholars is 75.45, which is bigger than the mean of scholars, which is 67.10. By the way, it is a presumption here that the higher the score, uh, the, high, uh, the, the higher the scientific ability. The lower the score, the lower the scientific ability for this context. And if you could see, since also, since the mean SAS of scholars then report the mean and standard deviation, so M equals 75.45, SD 7.54, is greater than that of the non-scholars, M equals 67.10 and SD of 5.40. Thus, it can be concluded that scholars possess higher SAS than the non-scholar counterparts. So you see, for this particular case, I emphasized which one is higher than the other. Take note, take note of this. If there is no significant difference, then you treat them as equals. So they have similar, they are equal in terms, uh, they are statistically equal in terms of a certain attribute, for example. But if there is a significant difference, I would like you to report which one is greater than the other and which one is smaller than the other, or I mean, which one is smaller than the other, and you have to provide a higher interpretation of that.
Okay? So that is for the second case. But if your other way, your way is different from this, no problem. What's more important is that you capture the essence of the interpretation. And how about for letter for the last one? Say, is Kim G an effective drug in treating fever? So let's say uh, you before uh, is let's say you have participants and before uh, they if they have a fever with a mean of 38.50 uh, degrees Celsius in terms of temperature rather with a standard deviation of 1.71. And supposing after taking Kim G drug for say 24 hours, you took the temperature after and the mean now is 37.01 degrees Celsius with a standard deviation of 1.14. And so you might ask, and I mean, the results revealed that there is a significant difference in the body temperature of patients before and after the treatment. So significant difference. So what possible interpretation may be given to this? Take note, there's a significant difference here. So you have to report which one is greater than the other or which one is smaller than the other and what do they mean? In this case, since you could see from here that the temperature is lower, you could say, there is a significant difference in the body temperature of patients before and after the treatment. So I just reiterated this. And if you could see, since the mean temperature after the treatment, then you state the mean and standard deviations here, is lower than that, than that before of the treatment, then thus we can say that Kim G is an effective drug in treating fever. How come you could claim effective drug? Because it was able to significantly lower temperature. It was able to decrease temperature that leads to a temperature that's nearly normal, for example. But if ever there's no example, what, but what happens if there is no significant difference? If there's no significant difference, meaning to say, maybe it's not effective in treating fever. And you could see that since the temperature got lower and there's a significant difference, so it's effective. However, be careful, be very careful. But what about what, I mean, it rarely happens, but if ever the temperature rose and if there's a significant difference, so it's just making it worse. <laughs> so be very careful. You have to understand what does the lowering of means mean? What does a higher mean mean? No pun intended. That's why you have to be very careful in your analysis. I hope you learned something from the discussion today. And I hope it will also guide you in writing your future uh, studies. With that, thank you very much. And a great day to one and all.